Hello and welcome to the Vector Software Testing Symposium. My name is Christian Witt and I'm one of the responsible product owners for virtualized testing at Vector. And I've been working at Vector for almost five years. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to show you the webinar from unit test to system test. Make sure your application works. In this presentation, we will take a look to the different testing levels that could be passed during the development of your application. These are unit tests, component tests, as well as system tests. For each of them, we will take a look to their challenges and goals and also when to use them during the development of your application. In the end of the presentation, I would like to show you also the vector testing solutions for each of them. I would like to start with an um, introduction and then going over and showing you the, testing, uh, the different testing levels. And in the end, I would like to show you also our solutions. The future is software. I would like to talk today about testing of embedded systems. Embedded systems are placed in almost all sections of our life. For example, they can be found in the avionics industry markets, in, in railway, in automotive, for example, for autonomous driving, in the medical section, for example, for surgery, for surgery robots, in smart home for um, electronic heating systems and their sensors, in industry 4.0, and a lot of other markets. Embedded systems have some special challenges and goals. For example, because the most of them using hardware, we do not want to wait until the hardware is available to test our application. So we want to start testing also in early development phases. And also we want to test our components independent of other components. Another challenge and goal is also that we want to test distributed systems. For example, when one embedded system running in a cloud and another embedded system running on a hardware device placed next to you on the table. You want to test the communication between them, but also you want to test the applications itself directly on your PC. And this brings me also to the next topic, virtualization. We want to virtualize our embedded system so that we can run it directly on your PC or also uh, on a server to do continuous integration and to do continuous testing. To test embedded software, I would like to talk about the different test phases, and these are unit tests, component tests, and also system tests. To bring that into a context, I would like to show you that on a traditional development process, the V-model. On the left side of our V-model, we have the requirement specification, the architecture of our software, and also the system design. And these are all preconditions before we start coding. As far as we start coding, we can directly start with unit testing and then go over to component testing and system testing. And each of the test phases are linked to requirements on the left side of the vModel. Okay, then let's dive into the testing levels. I would like to start with unit testing. What is a unit? A unit is the smallest element of our application, a function. And um, in a unit test, we want to test only one function, so only one atomic function call. And therefore we have here on the left side of that slide um, our system under test, which is a function here in this case, and around that we have our um, test environment. And the test environment calls our function. So the execution is controlled by the test environment. And this kind of test will be done mostly by the developer. And of course, we also want to test all the code lines of our function. So uh, let's assume, for example, we have an if-else statement in our function, then we want to test also all branches of that statements. So we want to test all code lines and therefore we maybe have to create several unit tests for one function. Let's take a look to the example here on the left side. Um, so we have here function one, which takes two input parameters and returns a value. And in the body of the function, we also call other functions and also maybe we are setting or getting global variables. And this is also one of the challenges that we have in unit tests. So we have to stop other functions and oft also have to set global, get or set global variables uh, within our test environment. Let's take a look to the test case here. So there would look like this. So we are calling our function in our test environment, set, uh, then we're getting a return value and then we check the return value against our expected value. And therefore we have to stop all the functions that will be called inside of our body. 
Okay, and when we have tested all the di uh, all different branches of our function in the unit tests, we can go over and do unit integration tests. Also in unit integration tests, the execution is controlled by the test environment and will be done mostly by the developer. But in difference to the unit test, we want to test now a sequence of function calls and also the interaction between that functions. Let's take a look uh, to the example that we have seen already. So we have here again function 1, which takes two input parameters and returns a value and calls in the function body other functions. But now, uh, in contrast to the unit tests, we're using the real code, for example, of um, function S1. Uh, so we have less uh, steps to do, less steps to implement in our test environment by uh, in unit integration tests than uh, in unit tests. And of course, we have also considered side effects um, in our uh, in unit integration tests between function 1 here in this case and function S1. And then a test case would look like this. So we are calling function 1. We are getting a return value and checking that return value against our expected value. But now we are calling function 1, but function 1 calls also and tests also function S1. So we're using more real code than in unit testing. And if we have also tested uh, unit integration tests or done unit integration tests, we can come over and do component tests. So in compo uh, a component is a set of function and can be, for example, a feature that we want to test. And compared to the unit tests, our system under test runs now autonomously and will not be scheduled by the test environment. So we have our own main loop that we are executing um, for our test. And the tester is mostly the component integrator. Let's take a look to the example here. So we have our main loop. Uh, we have our um, we have compositions that we are calling. For example, here composition one. Uh, which gets an input value and returns a value. And the return value of component 1 uh, will be used as an input for component 2, uh, which returns again also a value. And component 2 is the function that we want to test, or the component that we want to test. And therefore, we have to stop the whole component, of, or we have to remodel our component inside of our test environment. So we are stopping here now the functional system interfaces of component one. A test case was also looks different now uh, compared to unit testing. So we are setting, uh, for example, a value here, value a, uh, uh, variable a, and then we are waiting some time because uh, we know, for example, that our um, that our code, our main loop, has a cycle of 200 milliseconds, and then. Uh, we are we're waiting 500 milliseconds and then we know uh, that our function is, is called. And then we are getting a return value again um, from our um, system under test and checking that return value against our expected value. And challenges are that we have to connect on one side our test environment with our system under test. And also that our component under test should be um, should be kind of independent because we want to test um, this feature here or this this component. And also, if we have done component test, we can also do component integration test. And in component integration test, we are testing uh, multiple components. So in this case, this would be component one and component two that we want to test. And if we also have done that, we can go over and do software system testing. So in a software system test, our goal is that we um, want to test the whole application uh, unlike the hardware layer. So we want to abstract the hardware layer to um, create a virtual application that we can run on your PC instead of the hardware device. And therefore, we have to abstract the hardware layer. In this case here, we have a sensor one and the actuator one function, uh, which normally t uh, sets or gets a register value. And now we have to exchange that functions, that functional system interfaces, and now returning and setting uh, values from our test environment instead of the real hardware device. A test case would look like this. So we are setting our sensor value. And then we're waiting some time, and then we are, get, uh, we are checking the uh, return value, the actuator value, against our expected value. So we see uh, the application as a uh, kind of a black box. So we are stimulating that black box and measure the output of our application in the end. 
And um, because we do not have system interfaces where we can derive our tests, for example, we, can, we have to do uh, all the tests mostly in manual work, which is, a lot of, uh, which is a lot of work that we have to do for system tests. And the reason for that is because uh, on one hand, we do not have uh, the system interfaces and also the behavior of the application um, is only known by the tester and the developers. And uh, therefore, they have to create the tests by their own. And also, if we have tested now um, our full application in a virtual environment, then we can go over and do hardware system testing. So now we are testing the application flashed to a real hardware device and we're testing that hardware device. So in contrast to software system testing, there are no stops um, that will be done here. So we are testing uh, the application directly on the real hardware. And one of the goals is now that um, we want to reuse also our test cases. As I said, in software system testing, there's a lot of work that we have to do to create the tests because we have to do that manually. And one of the goals is also here that our test environment should provide us the possibility to test um, with the same test cases as well the, the, uh, the software uh, system test as well as the real hardware. And the test case here would then uh, uh, looks uh, it identically to the uh, software system test. So we are setting our uh, sensor O, waiting some time and checking the actuator O against our expected value. So what we have done until now is uh, unit testing, component testing, and also system testing. So we have tested our full application and we know our full application works. But we are not finished yet. Um, we have also another uh, kind of a test case in uh, system testing. We want to test also um, the connection between several applications. To illustrate that, let's assume we have uh, two applications. We have system under test one and we have system under test two. And they are communicating to each other. And both system under tests are well tested already with unit tests, component tests, and uh, system tests. But now we are running them together in a virtual environment only, only in a real environment, or in a combination of both. And then we see here that our application one, in our example, sends a speed value. Um, and the speed value is an integer value, and application two receives that speed value also as an integer value. But now when we run both applications together, we see unexpected behavior of application two. And the reason for that could be that system under test um, set, sends that value uh, in miles per hour. And system under test expects that value in kilometers per hour. Um, so we're getting unexpected behavior. And this kind of test can be only found uh, in a system test where we combine several applications and run them together. And to test that, we can stimulate our uh, sensor one, for example, here in this application, be waiting some time un until sensor, uh, until um, system under test sends, uh, have sent also some bus messages, for example, to application two, and then application two writes something to our, um, to the, um, to our actuator value. And then we are checking the actuator value against our expected value. And that way we can test also the communication between both applications. Okay, then let's summarize what we have seen until now. So all the testing phases that could be used during the development of your application. So here we see um, a development process on the left side here. Um, we left all the requirement specification and starting directly with coding and testing in a virtual environment. So we can start with unit testing and creating a lot of unit tests for all the function that we are using in our application. And if we have done that, we can do component tests um, additionally to all the integration, uh, to all the unit tests that are still running and will be executed. And then um, if we have also tested several components or features, we can uh, test the whole application in our virtual environment, unlike the hardware layer and create in that way a kind of a software prototype. So we can see we can do a lot of testing before we go into the hardware uh, directly on a virtual device uh, uh, in our virtual environment. And if we have done that, 
we can go over and create a real hardware prototype. So if we are flashing our application to a real device, and now we are testing in a system test, additionally, also our real hardware. But also additionally, we can add some more unit tests um, direct and, and run unit tests directly on your hardware. Because for example, you want to test the hardware layer directly in the communication between the hardware and your um, hardware layer. And this can be found and can be done also with unit tests here. And if we have tested now the full application also on a real hardware device, we can start the production of our product, of our application. Um, and then let's take a look to our solutions. So when we can take here a look again to the different test phases. So we have here on the left side, unit tests, component tests, and also system tests. And with the product VectorCast, we can do a unit tests and unit integration tests. When we go over and doing component and system tests, we can use Canu for software or virtual target and Canu um, to run our application in a virtual environment. And if you have done that also, if you have uh, done this also, we can use the VT system to connect our hardware device to Canu in our real environment in a system test. And for all the test phases, we can use VectorCast again to do code coverage. Let's take a look to VectorCast. So VectorCast is a tool which can be used for unit tests and unit integration tests. VectorCast allows you to execute your function in a virtual environment and to stop functionalities and also variables. So it creates a test harness for you, including all the test drivers and stuff that are necessary to test a single function, but also uh, a sequence of functions. And additionally, allows you to uh, or bring, brings you the possibility to instrument your software so that you can run the instrumented application also um, in uh, in your test cases, and you get a return that you um, which code lines are reached and which code lines are not reached. So in the end, you get a result, for example, that for this test case, 65% of your code um, are reached. And then you can go over and do component tests and system tests with Canoo for software, which focuses cyber physical systems. With Canoo for software, you can model your physical environment, for example, you can model other uh, software components, and also you can add test scripts created by Vitis Studio or include test scripts. Furthermore, it allows you also to connect to other IoT devices, for example, via MQTT. But how to connect your application now to Canoo for software? Therefore, we are using the tool SIL Adapter Generator, which is a part of Canoo for software. And the SIL Adapter Generator allows you to generate um, um, the functional system interface to communicate to Canoo for software instead of the real hardware device. For example, if you have um, a setter or getter value to um, read or set uh, something to the from the register of your device. And now this function can be exchanged with a function where we can communicate now instead of your real hardware device register values to values from Canoo for software. And additionally, we also provide you the possibility to connect your application with Canoo for software to test it. And then, and we have also a special use case here where we're using vVirtual Target, and this is AutoSAR. So AutoSAR is a standard which uh, defines that you have several modules in your application that can be configured, and also it defines the hardware layer. Um, and the hardware layer of your AutoSAR ECU is the OS module and the different MCAL modules. The different MCAL modules are, for example, the CAN, LIN, Ethernet drivers. And uh, because we know that modules, virtual target creates for you virtual modules that are auto-derived from the real modules. So you have to configure only once your modules. And then we derive with the virtual target virtual modules, which allows you to connection or brings you the connection to Canoo. And Canoo again um, can uh, model the physical environment, can model other software components, and allows you also to include test scripts created by um, VTest Studio. And furthermore, you can communicate 
also uh, via bus messages, for example, with CAN, LIN, Flex, FlexRay, and Ethernet. And additionally, to this kind of use case, we virtual target provide you the possibility also to stop or to emulate, to model the whole basic software. This is uh, something that virtual target does for you. And then you can fully concentrate on the implementation and the testing of your single or multiple software components. And if you have tested your virtual application with our tools, then you can go over and connect your real hardware device also with the VT system directly to Canu and reuse the test cases that you have already created um, for the virtual environment also here. Okay, and this brings me to the end of the presentation from unit test to system test. Make sure your application works. I would be happy if you can remember in your current or maybe in your next projects the different levels of testing and how to use them to increase your software quality. I'm looking forward to your questions and to meeting you in the following Q&A session. Thank you very much for your attention. See you there.